In the previous video, we used vectors to draw a cycloid in Desmos. So in this video, we are going to add the, um, the velocity vector and also later on the acceleration vector. So let me illustrate. So in the previous video, it was just a cycloid. It was just a cycloid. Now in this video, we're going to add the, the velocity vector, which is this purple one here, the purple vector, and the acceleration vector is this blue one here. So as it moves around, it will notice that the velocity vector is always tangent to um, to the uh, to the cycloid. So um, so our job is to come up with those two vectors. So let's uh, let's get cracking. Hang on. So uh, we've seen this before. If you have a position vector, and if you if you want the velocity vector, then you differentiate each component with respect to time. So differentiate this with respect to time, that will then be r. Differentiate this with respect to time, that will then be this. And then r is just a constant, so radius of a circle, it doesn't change, it has no... Well, when you differentiate this with respect to time, it would be nothing. And then uh, differentiate this with respect to time, this would then be this. So now to... Um, so so what, I, what this means is, you've got your velocity vector. So let's just imagine this is our velocity vector here. Now, let's just imagine this is our velocity vector here. So this vector is floating in, th in, uh, in space. So it's just a vector from here to here. It's just a vector from here to here. So, um, so now we need to append. We need to move this velocity vector and append it to our position vector. So we need to do this. We need to append it to here. So, um, so our velocity, we, we need to append the the velocity vector to our point. So to do that, we would need to go to Desmos, add a table, and then join join our current location. So our current location, this is lo our current location, L1 here. And then we've got our, our vector here. So this is our random vector here. Uh, we need to um, We need to append this vector to our current position. So this is what we need to do. So, in Desmos, this is how you have to do it. Um, you need to join location one to location two. So you what 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 you would need to put in here in Desmos would be, um, well, what is this location two here? Well, this location two would be you moving along to location one, which is this thing here. So what goes in here would be this. Hang on, would be this. You need to you need to move along here. And then move along here. That will then give you your location two. So, for example, R T. So I'm I'm writing this R T um, minus R sine T, and then plus, and then uh, uh, um, and then plus our velocity vector, which is this, which is this thing here. So hang on, which is this thing? I oh, will explain later on. So plus R minus r cos t so so this is our remember this is our location two this is our location two so so in desmos you would have to join this location to this location because for you to get to for you to obtain location two you would need to move along here and then along here so the point is that to draw this in desmos you have to carry this down r minus r cos t and then uh, plus uh, plus uh, the the velocity vector the y component of our velocity vector r sine t so so we need to stick this in here and we need to stick this in here so so let me illustrate so going back to our cycloid so hang on so this was our cycloid from the previous video uh, we now need to add um, we now need to add the um, the velocity vector so go to a new input hang on where is it there and then add uh, add table add table so our current position the the current location of our particle is given by let me just copy and paste let me think. Let me copy and paste this. This is the current position of our particle. 
copy and paste and then copy this is the Y component copy and paste now we need to um, to join the well we need to obtain our location 2 well location 2 would be the previous the previous uh, X component paste and then we got to add it to our velocity vector what was our velocity vector velocity vector was this r minus r cos t so it would be this r so plus plus r minus r r what r cos t hang on r cos t not t but a because a is our slider okay so now um now for the for for, for the uh, y component of location 2 let me just copy this and paste this and then we need to add it to our y component of our velocity so that would be this r sine t but it won't be t it would be a so it would be uh plus plus what was it r sine a so let me double check r sine a yeah so now um join the two points so double click on this for two seconds doesn't work two seconds and then see the lines check it so now if we slide a back and forth so that would give us our velocity vector so now we need to add our acceleration vector so adding our acceleration vector so let's go back down to here so we know that uh, given a position vector given a position vector if you differentiate it once it will then give you your velocity vector and by the way I can write velocity vector as um, as r prime of t and then our acceleration vector I can write as r double prime of t anyway um, from our velocity vector if you differentiate this with respect to t well when you differentiate r it would be nothing differentiate this that will then give you this differentiate this that will then give you this so um, so we've got our our acceleration vector so what that means is imagine let's just imagine um, our, our acceleration vector looks like this so the vector is like is floating in, in midair but then we would need to attach this um, this acceleration vector to the end of our particle we need to we need to attach this to the end of our particle so to do that um, go to Desmos add table and then this is our current uh, location of our particle so we need to uh, append this so what goes in here would be the current location r t minus r sine t and then add it to our, 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 our acceleration the y the x component of our acceleration so that would be uh, plus r sine t and then uh, for the y component the current location r minus r cos t and then add it to the y component of our acceleration vector so that would be r cos t and then these two they cancel each other out these two cancel each other out so what goes in here is just simply RT and R so going back to Desmos um, add a new table Hang on. and then go to add table and then uh, current location of our particle which would be this thing here let me copy and paste copy paste and then let me just copy and paste so this is the, the the location of our particle and then and then uh, it turns out that if you uh, simplify everything it's just simply RT and R so going back to here simply RT 
but it's not T, it's A. And then, uh, and then what was it here? Uh, and then R. Simply R. Um, so that's our. Now we've got our our acceleration vector attached to our current uh, particle. So click on this for two seconds. Click on this for two seconds. Yep, and then see lines. Oops. Oh, where is it? Bear with me. Double click on this for two seconds. Doesn't work. Double click on it for two seconds. Doesn't work. Double uh, click on this for two seconds. Now it works. All right. Now, now check the line. So now we've got our line now. So now going back to A. Slide A about, and then um, and then you can see we've got our our vector, our velocity vector, and our acceleration vector as we move along. But let me let me um, illustrate something else. Let me change this to two cycles. So hang on. So instead of from from two pi, I'm going to have two cycles. So that would be four pi, and then change the a to change the a to four pi. Bear with me. I want to show you something. Four pi. Okay, and let me think why it's not drawing two cycloids. Uh, let me change this to four pi. So now we've got two cycloids. Hang on, let me make this smaller. Change it back to. Hang on. Let me make our radius smaller so it will fit the screen. So now, now from this you can get some insight. Imagine you're an ant stuck to a circle and the circle is rotating along the table. So imagine you're an ant being stuck on a tin and the tin is rolling on the table. The um, the magnitude of the velocity vector, which is, which is the black line, the magnitude represents your velocity. Sorry, the magnitude of the velocity vector, which is this black line here, represents your speed. So you can imagine you being an ant on that tin rolling along the table. The magnitude of that thing, that the magnitude of that uh, velocity vector, represents your speed. The magnitude of this of the acceleration represents your acceleration. So as you're rolling along, hang on, as you're rolling along, by the time you get to here, you can see that there is no there is no velocity vector. So so that means the magnitude would be zero. So what that means is the speed is zero. So if you're an ant stuck on a tin, you will experience no speed at that point. You're, you're, you're actually stationary at, at that one particular point. And then something else you notice is that um, if, you're an, if you're an ant stuck on there, there, there is always an acceleration vector. Well, remember Newton's uh, second law, F equals ma. If there's an acceleration, there must be a force. Um, so what this is saying is that as you're rolling along, there's a point when the velocity is zero, uh, the, where, where the speed is zero. So there is a point in time where you are not moving at all, but the acceleration is always there. If the acceleration is always there, it means that um, you're always experiencing experiencing a force as you're moving along. So the the force will always there will always be a force acting on you, being being an ant on that on that tin rolling along. But there there is a time when you will come to a stop. Um, there, there's a time when you're not moving, but the force is always there. There's always a force acting on you as you're moving along on your journey. Okay?